Another method you might consider for an aquaculture operation is known as an indoor recirculating production system. Though this type of indoor system for aquaculture carries its own unique challenges, it also offers several advantages. The reason we got into recirculating aquaculture, uh, it just intrigued me to be able to raise fish indoors year round, around all that water, nice and warm, sounded pretty good. So that's why I looked to get into the indoor recirculating aquaculture. We started in an old fairing house uh, where we did a lot of equipment design and work. And then in 1994, we built this facility here strictly to raise fish in. We've done tilapia, yellow perch, hybrid striped bass, name a few. And now we sell equipment. Our, our main thrust of business here now is not only raising fish and shrimp, but we manufacture and uh, sell equipment. We've done all our own testing and design work here. Everything we sell, we manufacture ourselves. As with other fish production systems, a reliable water source is among the first things you must consider. If you're looking at aquaculture and you've decided that maybe you'd like to do the indoor recirculating aquaculture, one of the first things you want to do is have a site picked out where you'd like to do this at, either in existing buildings or maybe you'll build new buildings. First thing is to check your water supply, make sure you've got good water. A well may be a good water source, but you should consider a redundant system with a backup well in case your primary well goes down. Again, with recirculating systems, water quality is an essential key to fish health. Water quality must be checked and evaluated generally on a daily basis. Water conditions can change rapidly in a recirculating system, and you need to invest in water quality analysis equipment. Though the buildings for an indoor recirculating system may be located all on one site, vehicle access for trucks and fish haulers will also need to be adequate and well-maintained for year-round all-weather access. There are many different types of indoor recirculating systems you might consider, built in a variety of types of buildings. We've looked at different buildings, we've done different buildings. We've done hog barns, chicken barn, turkey barns, garages, pole barns, we've done about all of it. Any of it can work. It's, you need to look at, if you've got an existing building, you need to look at it, what's it gonna to take to bring this up to where I could raise fish indoors. You need a pretty good structure. It needs to be very well insulated because heat could become a factor. Some of the basic materials you'll need to create a recirculating system include the fish tanks, solids removal, and biofiltration. Systems can then become much more complex. Some systems have water sterilization equipment that uses ozone or UV to kill microorganisms in the water. Recirculating systems can be very intricate and complex and require the greatest degree of management. A good rule of thumb for beginners is to have no more than a half pound of fish per gallon of water when the fish reach market size. Experienced fish farmers can go to a pound per gallon or higher. Filtration of the tanks is another important consideration. Fish produce solid and dissolved waste. Both need to be removed from the water to maintain good fish health and properly manage a recirculating system. Solid material should be removed from the water after it exits the fish culture tanks. This solid material can foul the biofilters and cause health problems for the fish, so it needs to be removed and prevented from circulating throughout the system. There are many types of solid removal systems from drum filters to settling basins. Biofiltration is the next critical step of maintaining water quality and should be done after the solids are removed. Fish excrete ammonia, which is toxic if concentrations get too high in the water. The biofilter is seeded with bacteria that break down the ammonia into nitrates, which are far less toxic. Typical recirculating systems add makeup water every day to account for small amounts of water lost to evaporation or during filtration. But there are more complex systems that are close to 100% recirculation that use virtually no makeup water. These systems tend to use more complex components, but they also give you more control over your water quality and can allow you to improve efficiency. Recirculating systems tend to be higher users of energy than other types of aquaculture systems. But if managed properly, these additional expenses can be offset by the fact that you are providing ideal growth conditions for your fish year-round. In addition, water pumps and aeration are necessary and must be well maintained to provide the lifeblood of the recirculating system. Some systems combine the two 
by pumping the water with what is called an airlift, basically forcing air into a pipe which causes the water to follow. Designing a system with as few pumps as possible will save energy. Again, because water movement is key in a recirculating system, there must be a backup system in place to make sure the pumps never stop. There are certain considerations you got to take, uh, like emergency generation for power. Uh, we're, we rely quite a bit on electricity here, so anybody that's going to do that, you better have a backup system either with uh, electrical generation or oxygen, some kind of a delivery to your systems. In fact, redundancy, or a backup and spare equipment for every aspect of the recirculating system, is important because if something goes wrong, you won't have long before your fish start dying. It is also important to have backup power and an alarm system is needed to let you know immediately if there is a problem. Emergencies need to be responded to within 30 minutes or fish will likely die in a recirculating system because water quality will deteriorate rapidly. To prevent problems, recirculating systems need regular and ongoing maintenance. Filters must be cleaned to be sure they are not fouling or clogging. By its nature, a recirculating system includes many mechanical components, and each of these needs to be cleaned and checked frequently for wear and tear. It's got a higher initial capital investment than, say, ponds or uh, cage culture. But there again, I felt like the benefits of the indoor is that where you keep you moving year round with your product outweighs the, the, the fact that you're raising them in ponds or cages, which that's fine. If that's what you want to do, that's fine. But me, I wanted to go after a year round market and supply fish to the market year round. There are several methods to obtain fish for a recirculating aquaculture system. Depending on the species, you can buy fingerlings and stock them. You can purchase eggs or you can use your own broodstock and produce your own fingerlings. Eggs can be obtained by holding broodstock and spawning them on site. Some recirculating facilities have held broodstock indoors, while others hold them outside in ponds. You can use the pond fry production technique or indoor production outlined in the pond section. Producing the fish indoors gives you the highest degree of control. Naturally, this varies depending on the species of fish raised. Of course, as with all fish production systems, Access to feed is another important consideration. Make sure that you're going to have uh, within a good drive uh, feed. That's one thing you want to check into. There's a lot of feed suppliers out there, but some of them's not real close. So you want to know that you're going to have a good supply of feed. Same way with your fish. How am I going to receive my fish? What kind of fish am I going to do? Uh, we, here we've done tilapia, yellow perch, hybrid striped bass. Feed for the fish should be stored in a cool, dry place. Hand feeding is often done with indoor systems because it allows you to observe feeding and know how the fish are behaving, but it is more labor intensive. Automatic feeders are also used and save on labor, though they don't allow you to observe all of the feeding. Feeding in a recirculating system is the most critical of any aquaculture system. Water quality can change rapidly and thus requires you to be right on top of feeding rates to be sure you are not overfeeding. It's also critical that you closely monitor the efficiency of your filtration systems to be sure that they are operating optimally. Recirculating systems are fairly easy to harvest if they are constructed properly. Fish can be easily crowded into a smaller section of the culture tank and netted out. Recirculating aquaculture is the newest form of fish farming. You should be sure to give yourself the opportunity to learn how these systems operate before getting into full-scale production. However, once you build up your experience with these systems, you do give yourself the advantage of having ideal, year-round growing conditions. Whatever aquaculture system you're interested in pursuing, there's a wealth of research and technical expertise that you should draw upon before you get started. Much of this information is free, and there's no reason not to learn from the real-world experience and even the mistakes others have made.